Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today I'd like to discuss turning left in city skylines. How do traffic engineers get cars to cross one another without having it back up? How do we get cars to progress on the highway without the highway becoming a bumper-to-bumper -bumper mess? This is a video about intersections in city skylines and also interchanges in city skylines and a natural progression from one to the other. Everyone, thanks for being here. Let's talk about roads. Pictured here is a four-way intersection. It's a lighted intersection, so there is a traffic light managing the, the flow of traffic. And there's also an asymmetrical road, which is giving us four lanes entering. So you'll see each, each side has two through lanes, a left turn dedicated, and a dedicated right turn as well. So that is a fairly standard and slightly optimized four-way intersection facing an eternal amount of traffic. All sides will always uh, back up on a long enough timeline. This is a highway's worth of traffic, or even I would say eight highways worth of traffic flowing through it. So it will never catch up. A lot of you are probably thinking, Yumble, the reason it won't catch up is because you're not using a roundabout. I'd like to upgrade this to a roundabout and we will see what happens. Here we have an example of what I call a super turbo roundabout. Basically, it's a kind of a turbo roundabout variant where we have a dedicated right turn lane on all sides. So any car that approaches in the right lane can instantly enter without yielding and also exit free flowing. So I think that's great. Um, and it looks like it's moving a bunch of traffic, but unfortunately the tailback <laughs> is actually it's actually way worse than the traffic light, unfortunately. Nothing has changed as far as where the traffic is coming from or going. Um, I did change the road to be an asymmetrical three plus two, which is fine. That's actually what this roundabout wants, but the, the tailback goes on forever. So those of you who said a roundabout is the answer, unfortunately, it does not cut the mustard. And this is one of the more powerful ones that I'm aware of. What is next? There's gotta be something better than this that can, that can help us uh, move these cars. And here it is, I've solved traffic forever. No more traffic problems, no more backups, no more uh, conflict points. Grade separation is the answer. Here you can see that I've used an overpass to separate traffic entirely. The astute among you, however, may notice that no one is able to turn right or left. The two roads no longer conflict, but they also don't intersect anymore. So no one has the option to go any any direction other than straight through, which is good, but that's only half of the solution. Now we have to figure out how to allow vehicles to turn right and left in between these two roads. Here we have a fine example of a cloverleaf interchange. This is special because it's actually the first interchange ever invented. It is free flowing, though imperfect. The way that it works is all of your right turns are handled by slip lanes, just like this blue truck exiting in the bottom right corner. If that same approach wanted to make a left though, they would cross the overpass. Once again, grade separation is key with interchanges as we described a moment ago. And they would take the first right afterwards, netting them a left-hand turn. The one drawback of this interchange is the weave. As I said earlier, it's free flowing. There's no conflict. You never have to turn left against traffic. So there's no need for a light or anything like that but you'll see that cars are constantly switching lanes in the middle here, and they're switching lanes against one another. So it's not simply a merge. Traffic coming up this leaf has to get out of this lane before the end in order to continue on. And traffic that wants to use the lower left leaf to make their left turn has to conflict against that traffic. So it is, it is historic and it's free flowing, though it is very much imperfect. There are other interchanges that can connect two major roadways or two highways or two interstates, whatever you'd like to, to connect without the weave. This is the stack interchange. It's actually a four level grade separated set of roads at the center point. So none of the traffic has to turn left over oncoming traffic, just like in the Cloverleaf, but there's also no weave. So this is a perfect interchange, essentially. I would, I would argue that it's the most uh, perfect four direction interchange. This is also in a class of interchanges known as system interchanges. System interchanges are for connecting one highway to another. 
but they are not the only type of interchange. There's an entire other type of interchange called a service interchange, which is for moving traffic on and off the highway. So keep that in mind moving forward. System interchanges are for connecting one highway to another. Service interchanges are for getting traffic off the highway and on the highway too. I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up and they say, why didn't you just build a stack? I actually get that a lot. I show all kinds of uh, interchanges in previous videos, how to build them, where to use them. And people always inevitably say, it's not free flowing, therefore it's a failure. I argue against that. I say that it's important to have smaller interchanges as well, because not everything can be a stack and not every intersection can be free flowing. Let me show you some example of service interchanges used for getting vehicles on and off the highway. This is my personal favorite design for getting cars on and off the highway. This is a partial clover leaf. There are actually dozens of types of partial clover leaves, but this one is a B4 partial clover leaf. The designation is denoting where the leaves are and which road they're coming off of. But this is called a B4. You can see the highway is grade separated, so it's underneath the arterial road. And this six lane arterial can lead into your city. So unlike the stack, the stack really can only lead from highway to another highway. It does not get you on or off the highway. This one will effectively get you on and off the highway in mass quantities. This is the same volume that the stack was passing, the same volume that the, the four-way light could not pass, the same volume that the roundabout, even an optimized roundabout, could not pass this much traffic. Partial cloverleaf is, of course, much bigger than a roundabout, but keep in mind, it's actually much smaller than the stack. So here's the, for scale, this is the stack that we were, um, <laughs> that we were looking at moments ago. So if you're looking to get traffic off the highway, don't use the stack. It's massive. It's, it's expensive. Uh, you cannot have every interchange be a stack unless you want to waste a lot of space and money and, and it's just... It's a lot. So use something like this, a partial cloverleaf. Other suitable options would include things like a diverging diamond or perhaps a single point urban interchange. You can also integrate roundabouts into these. If you put roundabouts where these intersections are, you can get some pretty great results. I think that that actually reduces flow slightly on inter interchanges like this, but it can be done. Of course, right now I'm using lights on either side. You can see how the lights are are uh, cycling, how traffic will stop and then be allowed in, and, and it's it's actually quite beautiful to watch over time. But feel free to experiment with roundabouts if you would like. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. This one was, was really fun to do. I love talking about interchanges. I love roads. I like talking about the advantages and drawbacks of different types, lights, roundabouts, interchanges. The big takeaway here is service versus system. So use a, use a service interchange to get cars on the highway and off the highway, use a system interchange to connect one highway to another. Know the difference. Feel free to, to uh, ask questions in the comments. Feel free to join the Discord. I've been answering questions all the time there, and we also have a very knowledgeable community surrounding this, uh, this City Skylines project that we've all found ourselves in. I also stream on Twitch twice a week. Feel free to find me on Twitch and uh, come over for a stream if you'd like. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.